<sighs> in the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the host or the gatekeeper of this program known here on social media, YouTube, Vimeo, Daily Motion, Facebook, wherever you may find me. I am known as the mighty, mighty, mighty mm, Angel Snub Nub 7. I am your brother and your friend, soul brother number one, Talik Ibn Ra. I really don't know how to begin our talk this morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you have decided to give me the honor of listening to my very, uh, how would I describe it? My yeah, what's the word I'm looking for? But I'm just thankful that you are giving me a bit of your time. I thank you so much. I hope that I can bring to us the reality of our situation. I am not going to give you uh, fantasy and fiction and I'm going to be as factual, as logical, bring to us common sense as possible because that is what is needed during this period of time. We can no longer, if you truly wish to be free of oppression and harassment and murder and rape and discrimination and all these things that we who are the descendants of slaves born in America have suffered on this soil called the United States of America going on 500 years. If you truly want to be free from this or at least on your way to that freedom, then we need to, as they used to say during the 1960s and 70s, then we need to get real. And if you notice, we don't say that a lot anymore because many of us know that we are not real. I have a brother that calls himself J.T. Riley 1. And J.T. Riley always say, there are only two people in this world. That is the real and the fake. Which one are you? And who will you follow? Who will you listen to? Who will you uh, accept their advice from those who are real or those of whom are fake? It is quite clear that we have a tendency to uh, embrace those who are fake because those who are fake sell false dreams and give us false hope and they give us a life of ease and there is no sacrifice. It is very uh, comfortable in what they tell us. So we are lovers of ease. We don't want to be uh, outside of the comfortable zone. We like living in this world that we have built for ourselves which is clearly delusional. And as long as you stay in that fictional, delusional world with invisible gods that never appear and prophets that no longer exist, taking the advice of people who lived thousands of years ago, of which there's nothing wrong with that. We can always learn from those who were in the past. However, if you allow that 
which was in the past dictate the present and the future when they have no idea of who you are and what is going on here and you do not know how to uh, you can't separate the past from the present and the future then you only set yourself up for more problems and that's what you see within the communities of the descendants of slaves born in America having dark skin endless confusion that's all you see. And the path that we find ourselves in, the only path that you're walking, regardless if you're hollering black power or if you are believing in Jesus or Allah or all these numerous beliefs that we have embraced, no matter where you find yourself, the ultimate place is the physical grave and you and your children will only be the world's greatest and best slaves and that will be your fate eternally. I have 55 minutes. I want to try to say everything that I want to say within this hour. Please be patient with me. I'm going to go through this very, very quickly. I don't want to keep you long. I don't want to keep myself long, but I want to offer us some words so that we may be able to think and reflect, not just act upon emotion. I was watching a commercial. I was also watching an excerpt from the SP Awards, I think that's what it is. LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony, these basketball players, they were talking about the current situation, whereas uh, police officers have been murdered and black men have been shot down by the police officers. I don't like saying police officers, the pigs. Let's just get real with it and stop the, the uh, trying to be nice, politically correct crap, the pigs. That's what I'm going to call them, the pigs. That's what the Black Panthers called them. The situation does not warrant us being nice and friendly. You have a group of people that are specifically targeting and murdering black men, women and children, but you see black men, and I am a black man, black man myself. And I have had their guns pointed at me. And I knew what the deal could be. Another problem in the so-called black community. I don't like calling us black. I like, there are, there has been no dark-skinned people that I know of that call themselves black or African. We gave ourselves the name soul in the 60s and 70s. We call ourselves soul people and that's what I'm going to call ourselves soul because you are more than a skin color. Your slave masters and these races make you a color. You melanated. So what you melanated? Dogs are melanated. Birds are melanated. There's a lot of melanated creatures. So what? The only thing you did was replace black with melanated. So what? It's not about skin color. Y'all need to get off of that bag. And the racists target you because of your melanin and your being black. Because really, in essence, you are their property. And they can do with you as they please. And they do it every day. We do not teach our children about who their enemies are. We don't warn our children about the reality of racism. And even as adult people, we try to deny that it exists. So we walk out of our houses and we believe for some reason we will return back home safe. 
but clearly within the last few weeks, there have been black men that did not return home safe. They should have known to be careful when dealing with an enemy, dealing with a demon. But you had Beyonce and all these other entertainers, they also made a, a, uh, a, a statement in a video and LeBron James and the basketball players and all this is wonderful and beautiful. If you were talking to somebody who gave a damn, I'll say that again. If you was talking to somebody that gave a damn, do you really think these people care about you? I mean, it's honorable. And, you know, you show great honor and valor to speak a message to stop the violence and this and that. And that's wonderful. However, we as a people in this nation have been speaking the same thing going on 500 years. These people don't give a damn. You are in, in denial of your position in this nation, who you are and who they have been for the last 500 years. Stopping the violence. In this area where I reside, this year, it has been about going on 100 murders. This week, a school principal was murdered, and her boyfriend was murdered by her ex-boyfriend, who was a childhood friend. Black on black crime. And of course, the Caucasian people will say, see, y'all black on black crime. This week, the Caucasian people have done a very good job of keeping up with the black on black crime because it, it has been a whole lot of Caucasian pink on pink crime too. And also in this area, a police officer was shot. And now he's disabled. We, the citizens of this nation, live in delusion and fairy tales. None of this shocks me whether it is pink on pink crime black on black crime mexican on mexican crime chat all it, it is expected it's it's no big deal to me none of it is a shock it's a shock to you you know why it's a shock to you because you live in denial and delusion and fairy tales this nation since its creation was born on murder it was born on, created due to slavery and murder and rape and lies and treachery. That's what this nation has been as long as, as it has existed. This nation is not a righteous nation. With all the churches and mosques and, and synagogues on every corner in this nation, the people are still savages. The people are still savages. Because if the citizens were not savage, how could you have this day in and day out? It's impossible. If they are not killing each other, they're lying and stealing and cheating and gossiping and slandering and raping little children and beating up dogs and cats and all kinds of madness every day in this nation. You tell me, I don't know when you were born, but during the time that you was born, within that time period, show me any point in that time where this nation was not at war, having some conflict, dropping bombs and killing somebody. Show me. Very few, very, very few. 99.9% .9 can't say that they have lived within a period of time where America was at peace. This nation is always doing something to cause harm to somebody, stealing and lying and murder and rape and all these different things, always causing harm. And then you sit around and you lie and you kill and you steal. 
and you treat people like garbage and you believe that they will never retaliate. See, this is what has this is what is happening right now. America and Europeans in general have went around the earth and have lied and stolen and cheated and raped and murdered and plundered and killed. And you think that nothing is supposed to happen to you. You're supposed to steal, lie, cheat, kill, and all this that you do to other people. And then you're supposed to go home and peacefully enjoy it. That's not how things work. Because sooner or later, those of whom are oppressed, those of whom you have done wrong, you have exploited, sooner or later they're going to get sick and tired of it and they don't care no more. It's either you or me. I'm sick of it. And this is the environment, this is the atmosphere that you live in. So LeBron James and Beyonce and all these people can make these corny uh, commercials. It all falls on deaf ears. Nobody cares. The people who are doing these things, those who are controlling and pulling this, the strings, don't give a damn about that stuff. You are in denial. You are in, in denial of the history of Caucasian people. Whenever they met dark-skinned people, they did not come or go to Africa to love Africans. They did not go to China to love the Chinese. They did not go to Mexico to love Mexicans. They came, they went to these lands to plunder and to take and to steal and murder and kill, destroy if necessary, and that's what they've done. Now all of a sudden, the Mexican and the Chinese and the Africans, everybody love the Caucasian people. They are the ones who beat your ass. This nation has never been holier than thou. It has always been wicked and demonic and evil. It has never been holy and righteous. So I don't know why y'all expect that peace and holy things supposed to be going on. These people have never been just. They have always been liars and deceivers. And condition the people to believe in lies and delusions and fantasy. Mm. And here you are, the descendants of slaves born in America. We are nothing but a dark-skinned version of European. Black power. You can say black power all you want to. You're nothing but a black power European. A black nationalist European. A Hebrew Israelite European. A comedic European. That's the reality of it. You have not you have not changed. You've only changed your name, but it is very clear your mentality and your mindset, you're nothing but you're just like your masa. Yes, you are. It don't take long to prove it. You act just like those races. Just the fact that you holler black, blackity black, 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 black. You might as well say, why do we white, 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 white? It's the same thing. Because you have their mind, you have their mentality. You are black supremacist European. <laughs> wow. And because you are them, it is difficult for us to rise against them and rebel against them because that's your daddy. That's, that's daddy. That's father. That's father and mother. It's very difficult to strike your father. It's very difficult to strike your mama. And that's who these Caucasian pink races are to you. And me. I'm going to include myself too. They are daddy. They are parents. They are the only parents that we have ever known. We know that they are bad parents. But they are the only parents we've ever known. And we've grown to trust them. Even though. We see their history. In the past. And we see their behaviors right now and we are in denial. Mm, wow. 
Wow. We've lost our instinct because we have been domesticated by them and we have become a version of them. We don't see them as an enemy. We don't see them as somebody to be afraid of and be, be mindful of. And somebody, we, we've lost our instinct to danger. When a snake comes around, you all of a sudden, you know, you know, you get on your guard. If a hawk comes from out the sky, you get on your guard. If a dog is in front of you and that dog is growling, you get on your guard. But these people can growl. They can crawl on their belly like a snake. No matter what Caucasian people do, you trust them when they smile. That's all they have to do. Yeah, I put you in jail for the rest of your life and you you and then they smile and you say, oh, it'll get better. One day I'll be free. Mm -mm -mm. There was a scene in the movie 1978 movie, I believe it was. 77, something like that. Uh, the movie is called Mandingo. And Mandingo had grown so close to his masa. And the only reason why his masa was close with Mandingo was because Mandingo was a, a fighting slave. And he was a winner. He was beating up and killing other slaves in the ring. There was no love. The monster did not care nothing about The reason why they love you, Beyonce, is because you entertained them. Just like Fiddler did. Come play my Fiddler. The only reason why they love you, Will Smith and Vanessa Williams and Jada Pinkin and Oprah, because y'all entertainers. They don't love you for real, but you think they do. Ask Bill Cosby. As soon as these false allegations start coming up, look how Caucasian pink America turned on you, Bill. But Bill, you know, Bill still views some of them are our friends. And that could be true to a certain point. I'll talk about that in just a second. But that does not mean if they come around you, you should have and be on your guard. But they smile. And you trust, and you've been trusting, and now you are in this condition, going on 500 years, nothing has changed. So when Masa got mad at Mandingo, not only did the Masa shoot Mandingo, but he was so filled up with rage because he felt as though Mandingo betrayed him. He shot Mandingo and stabbed through him in a pot of war, hot boiling water and stabbed him with a pitchfork. Murder overkill. But see, that's how they feel about us in this nation. They are a bunch of bullies. And a bully would do whatever they can to somebody who they know is weak and won't fight them back. I understand your fear. You are scared of Caucasian people. That's the bottom line. If the shoe was on the other foot, I guarantee you, they would not be on TV talking about stop the violence. In fact, right now, you have many Caucasian pink people all over this nation. They have uh, uh, boxes and boxes of ammunition and and, and, and all kinds of guns all stored up. And we have not done nothing to them. Just in case. Here you are. You haven't done nothing. The so-called black man in America. The Negro in America. Have done nothing to these Caucasian people. But yet and still. They are not like you. They are. Storing ammunition, buying guns, so they can kill you, and you haven't done nothing. Now here you are, the racist pigs are actually murdering you. You are still discriminating in housing. You are still discriminating in employment. You are still discriminating in all the facets of of so of this American life. And you, they smile, and you 
<laughs> yeah, Masa. You ain't like the rest of You ain't racist. Racism cannot, has no power unless there's a majority behind it. So if, if racism still exists and we have a problem with racism, there is a majority that is giving that racism power. But at the same time, all, all the Caucasian people and your Caucasian friends, I ain't racist, I ain't racist. Well, who is it then? Who is the one that's giving racism power? It's just not, it's just not, it just, it just don't have power and don't have an effect on others simply because it's there. Somebody is giving it power. You're dealing with a bully and you are afraid. I see, I understand why you're afraid. But how long are you going to accept this? Some of you call Caucasian people your brother and sisters. My, my white brothers and sisters, my white brothers and sisters, when I was in the nation of Islam, I was taught, you want for your brother what you want for yourself. I was taught in the nation of Islam, when your brother have a bowl of bean soup, half of that bean soup belong to you. Is these Caucasian people giving us half of their soup? Do it seem through their actions? I don't care what they say out of their mouth. Through their actions? Can, or do you see that your brother want for you what they want for themselves? No, you have not seen this. For the whole 500 years, our people have been here. Stop you living in the loop. Then you want to turn around and think that you're going to get better treatment because you marry them and you sleep in the bed. They don't care nothing about they, they don't care. They sleep with dogs and cats and elephants and stuff. They, you nothing special. They used to rape black women. They rape black men. They rape black children. So what? That don't mean anything. That don't prove that they love or care about us, period. Don't mean nothing at all. But they smile when they do it. I'm going to rape you, but I'm going to smile. That makes it better. I'm going to just shoot you in the head. But I'm going to smile while I'm doing it. Remind you of the joker, don't it? There has only been one kind of Caucasian people or person, individuals or group, that did uh, put themselves in a position whereas you could say, you could give them a chance, you know, you might be able to trust them. And that was this group of people called abolitionists. And they are in the minority. Because if they were in the majority, there never was, there never would have been slavery. Maybe some other things, but clearly they were against enslavement. There's a group of Caucasian people that would be called nigger lovers. And according to history, if you was a nigger lover, you could end up lynched in a tree. If you was a nigger lover, you might they might find your body under some rocks in the desert somewhere. Because you loving them niggas, selling out your race. That abolitionist crap. Just to just to say that you are abolitionist or that you want to try to or you view so-called black people as an equal to yourself, you could be murdered. So here you are in 2016 and you trust in everybody but those of whom have the abolitionist mind, not those who just talk. John Brown was an abolitionist. And John Brown and his family had no problem with taking up arms to free the slaves. Unfortunately, the slaves were too scared and too messed up in the mind like we still are today.
There's no difference. Here's a Caucasian man telling you that you need to be free. No, I don't think I best to do that. I ain't going to pick up a gun and shoot my master. Uh -uh, I ain't going to do that. So John Brown <laughs> gets hung. You love faith. J.T. Riley says there's only two people in this world. The real and the fake. Y'all love the fakes. Real Caucasian people. They would march with you. They would die with you on the front line. You know a person is real when they're willing to give their life for that which they stand for. If I'm a Caucasian purpose, uh, if I'm a Caucasian person and I truly believe in that black people, those of whom are called black people, deserve to be treated as an equal in this nation, I'm willing to stand with them, fight with them, and die with them if necessary. You don't see a lot of this because racism, again, is fueled by the majority. Whether that majority is outright in your face, racist, or they are undercover. The majority are undercover. They slick and they smile in your face. It'll get better. You've been saying that for 500 years. It's going to get better. Get a piece of chance. <laughs> wow. You have been made insane. Love will overcome. We shall overcome. God going to do this. Allah going to do that. Black people, you are insane. But that's, I mean, that's expected. You have been turned into a European. And I don't care. You can holler that black power stuff and I'm a comedic and I'm a Hebrew Israelite. I'm New Wabian. You're a New Wabian European. You keep doing the same stuff over and over again, expecting a different result. You have a round peg trying to put it in a square hole, and that's not going to happen. And you look so foolish, and the world looks at you like you're a fool. We refuse to accept our reality. Who we're dealing with. We're dealing with the, the honorable Elijah Muhammad and the black Muslims called the racist Caucasian pink people devils. There's a reason for that. The devil is a master at lies and manipulation and deception. He's a murderer. You see this in these people's history. They are the majority. You can get angry all that you want to. I'm not in denial. I see it. It's plain and clear. It's no secret. They smile at me, but I understand your smile don't mean nothing because the smile, I got to watch your hands because you'll stab me in the back. You can't be trusted. You're going to have to prove your trust to me. Look how they treat themselves. So if they treat themselves in a certain way, why do you believe they give a damn about you? Do you remember there used to be a cartoon and they used to draw a caveman. He would have a club in one hand and he would have his Caucasian woman in the other hand dragging her by her hair. This gives you an idea of how the Caucasian man viewed and treated his own woman. He's going to beat her with that club if she gets out of line. And he's not even, she's not moving fast enough for him. So he's going to grab her by her hair and drag on the ground. Wow, wow, wow. Mm, mm, mm. Let me give you another example of the type of mentality. You already know, but you, you can't you can't refute nothing that I say. So don't even try it. That little cartoon tells you a lot in, in, in and of itself. 
if you study European history, you will find very quickly they did not give a damn about how they treated one another. So they definitely don't care nothing about you and me. Many of you know my story. I, I, was, I was charged with a crime and locked up unjustly in a mental institution. I was there for a little while. About 10 years. Okay. It's all a lie. I can talk about it because it's a, it's a damn lie. Unless you don't like me. You know, right now, I can see why they say that you was crazy. But there's nothing crazy about people who enslave others, discriminate and hate for no reason. There's nothing wrong with those kind of people. They express it every day. Don't call them insane, but you'll call me insane because I'm brave enough to express this out in the public. It's no secret. I'm not saying nothing that uh, that, that that's, that's not out there. I mean, it's very clear. But to give you a, a mindset of, of, of their mentality, the liars, these Caucasian people said, I had a mental illness and I needed medication to control my insanity. So, they gave me Risperdal. Do y'all see that? Where is it? That's Risperdal. Okay. And they said I needed Zyprexa. You see that? This is the, this is the medicine. Okay. They said I needed Zyprexa and, and Risperdal to control my insanity. So they gave it to me, and as you can see, I cuffed it. Then I just began to agree with everything they said. Whatever they said, I agreed with them. Oh, he's getting better. He's getting better. So then they began to write that the that the medication has improved my insanity because I'm agreeing with everything they said, which is clearly not the case. And when we went to court, and the court knew that I was not taking that medication, which they was lying, talking about the reason why my behavior has improved is because of the medication. It was just, it was just simply ignored. Just simply ignored. These people are liars and deceivers. And because nobody else could see what was going on, all over this nation, you have people being railroaded, innocent people in jails and prisons and mental institutions because there's nobody that that's watching these wicked people. One day, I was surrounded by these wicked doctors and, and caretakers and I asked them, I said, uh, ain't we brothers and, brothers and sisters? One of the devils said very quickly, you ain't no, you ain't no brother of mine. Somebody else said, one of the other devils said, what kind of game, what kind of game are you trying to run on, a, on us? I was just simply saying, because they claim they believe in God. Aren't we all brothers and sisters in the eyes of the Lord? Don't you see me as a, as a brother? And if you see me as a brother, is this the way that you would treat your brother? These people don't care nothing about that stuff. That keeps you docile. They don't care about that God stuff. The only thing they care about is money. And they enjoy controlling people. They don't care about all that other stuff that y'all, you think they are interested in it. They're not interested in it. They are only interested in material things and having somebody serve them. They like being in a position where they can be served, put on a pedestal. They have a sick mentality. They know what they're doing. The Jesus of the Bible asked his father 
Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. These demons know exactly what they're doing. They're not doing it in ignorance. They know they have they have known what they have been doing, going on five hundred years and longer. Your problem is you're not serious about your condition. You're not serious about freedom, justice, and equality. You don't give a damn about your children because you're going to sit around and then you die and give this situation over to your babies. You don't love them. And you want them to go through the same hell that we are going through right now. What the hell did you have babies for? So you can so you can send them to hell. That's all. Punkify, sissify parents. I wouldn't claim none of you. You claim to be in a struggle. We are in we are in the black struggle. We we we're we're in the black struggle. Black struggle. What does it mean to struggle? When you are struggling, struggle means you are suffering some kind of discomfort. When somebody buys your uh, your hands with a rope, and you're struggling to try to get the rope. That rope can cut into your flesh. That rope can cause your wrist to bleed. You are suffering great discomfort trying to struggle to get out of it. When somebody choked you in your neck, you are struggling to breathe because you lack air. Struggle means you are in, a, you are in discomfort. But clearly, see that's another reason why Caucasian people and other people around the planet don't take the complaints by so-called black folks serious because it really don't look like you're, you're, you're struggling. It don't look like you are in discomfort. Y'all driving pretty cars. You got a nice house. Wear pretty clothes. Matter of fact, the fruit of Islam, of the nation of Islam, they're out in the street with their bow ties and clean and sharp. Don't look like you're struggling. Don't look like you're in no discomfort. If somebody choking your neck and you're struggling, there's a certain response that you expect. Thrashing and you're struggling. Get off of me. When that rope is on you and you want to get free, you're struggling. Blood gets to dripping off the wrist. You're trying to get out there. You don't see that. So how can the so-called black people, how can you be in a struggle when y'all are listening to my video with your air conditioning on? With your can of beer next to the, com to the computer? What kind of struggle that you talking about? You get dressed up and, and try to look pretty and, and Africanized and you go to these debates. You don't look like you're struggling. You don't look like you're in discomfort. And that's the reason why you take from Caucasian people what you take because you're comfortable. You're comfortable Negroes. You're not, you're not really hurting. And you really don't give a damn about what happens to your brother and your sister. Oh, well, another one got shot. What's for dinner? Oh, well, another one got shot. I got to get up and go to work in the morning. You don't give a damn. You want for your brother what you want for yourself. You don't. You are fake just like your damn father, the devil. And the works of the devil you shall do. Because you have no problem beefing with other black folks. Spreading lies and slander and gossip on other black folks. You get in your car and go... Shoot and kill another soul brother and sister. But you won't do nothing against them. Because that's your mom and your dad. A nation of cowards. We don't even have that, that drive for revenge. I was watching a Chinese movie. 
martial arts film and somebody killed this guy's father and he was a little boy seven eight years old whatever at seven or eight years old that little boy said when I grew up I'm going to avenge my father's death and when he became an adult or during the period of time as he became an adult he was preparing himself every day I'm going to Get those who killed my father. How many of your fathers? How many of your mothers, black man and woman in America, how many of your fathers and mothers have died and bled on the soil of this nation? How, how many? You have avenged none of them, y'all damn cowards. Sister five punks. Marching to Washington. Marching in Mississippi and Alabama, wherever, just marching and or even just looking, looking tough. These devils don't care nothing about you looking tough. Taking pictures with a gun. You ain't gonna bust the grape. Get the hell down. There's only two people in this world. Real and fake. There's a character called Batman. And Bruce Wayne's parents were killed by this mother. The reason why he became Batman to avenge his parents' death. So Batman came into being so that he can give hell to all criminals to av avenge his parents' death. Bruce Wayne. Y'all don't even learn nothing from a cartoon character. Because you're scary. But you have people sending messages to each other. Let's, let's get that nigga Talik. You listen to the people that give you hell. The, the people that give you hell tell you, uh, forget the past. Love your enemies. And because you are cowardly, you don't mind accepting that. You won't take Bruce Wayne's advice and avenge your parents. You won't take the little Chinese guy advice and avenge your daddy. And they come around me talking all the time. That's why these people don't want to mess with me because they ain't talking about nothing. If you're not talking about 1,000% rebellion, and putting the option of self-defense on the table, you ain't talking about nothing. And that's all these devils respect is violence. You got to make them hurt just like they make you hurt. I feel sorry for the black youth. Y'all young people, y'all keep listening to these older, older people who are scary, they're a bunch of punks, telling you to, about spirituality and what God gonna do and all that religious crap. Then they die on you and leave you in this mess. If religion and spirituality don't make you get to the point where you want to defend yourself, then that's a bunch of bull crap. If the crackers, if the if the male Caucasian pink male police officer is the one that keep coming in your neighborhood killing you, then you have the right to put him in check and tell him these ain't. You can send the female Caucasian officer. You can send the black officer, the Chinese, the Indian officer. But these ain't coming in my neighborhood. That's all you have to do. That should have been done a long time ago. It's very simple. You keep They keep allowing these insane crackers, these pigs, predisposed to killing and murdering us. They keep sending them in and we keep allowing them into our neighborhood knowing what they have the potential to do. Just like if you take a wolf and let that wolf go among your sheep, sooner or later that wolf is going to eat your sheep. That's just the bottom line. These are wolves. They are known. 
It is not an issue. It's a proven fact. I don't want them in my neighborhood. And you should have the right to snipe them. That's right. So Michael Xavier Johnson gave us the answer to our problem. And he is a martyr. And we should view him as a martyr. Because unlike many of us, we're not going to we're not going to pick up actual arms. Although we know that should be an option. We want to keep talking about education. We got to have land, economics. Clearly, you don't know black American history because we have education. We have had plenty of land. We've had plenty of economics straight up out of slavery. And the crackers, these pigs didn't give you no help at all. But once you got it, because they knew that you could not defend yourself because they are bullies, then they lied and cheated you out of your land, your, your, your economic strength, your education don't mean a damn thing. And if necessary, they formed, they formed the Ku Klux Klan and they just outright murdered you. And the government approved all this. I'm going to say this again. See, you have to take up arms. It must be an option. And if you notice about Michael Xavier Johnson, the, the fella, the brother, who took action in Dallas, if you notice, and this is what I noticed about him, he did not, he had a conversation with the pigs. He did not say, black power. You notice that? He did not say, Allah Akbar. Basically, what he, the message that he was sending to the pigs is that you are going to leave me the hell alone. And he was like Bruce Wayne. You kill mine, I'm going to kill yours. I'm going to avenge their deaths. Even if I have to die. Bruce Wayne, I'm going to, def I'm going to avenge my parents. Even if I have to die. The little Chinese boy, I'm going to avenge my father. Even if I have to die. It's not about, about winning or losing a fight. It's about you're not going to treat me any kind of damn way. There was a sister. We need to look her up. There's a lot of powerful, strong black women. That's in the struggle. That was in the struggle. She's passed this life now. Fannie Lou Hamer. Fannie, Fannie Lou Hamer. Fannie, I think it's Fannie Lou Hamer. And she told these devils, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. How long y'all going to allow these people to bully you? I had a friend who was a bully. <laughs> now, this, this, was, this was messed up. I had a friend who was a bully, but he had a bully. And his mother... His mother told him one day when he came home, I heard uh, you got a problem with this book. He said, yeah. She said, you're going to go out and you're going to fight this bully because if you don't, when you come home, I'm going to whoop your ass. So he go, he's going to get a, a whooping by the bully and he's going to get a whooping by his mother. He went out he was scared. He faced that bully. He whooped that bully's ass, and that was the end of it. See, he could have done that a long time ago. The reality of it, brothers and sisters, I know, you know, it's not about hate. Any Caucasian person that want to take up arms with me, die with me on the battlefield, 
they earn my trust. Unfortunately, there will be no socializing because we dead on, on the battlefield. That's the only Caucasian person that I trust. Those who will go to war with me. You are afraid. If you face these bullies, they're not as bad as you believe they are. I'm not going to tell you what we should do. We should do things in a more slick and organized way. I'm not telling us to go out and do what Michael Xavier Johnson, what he done. But that should be an option and you have a right. Every animal on this planet has a right to try to defend itself. Including you and me. We should not, especially as black men, and I always call black men cowards. I don't want to say that, but unfortunately, your actions, your behaviors. Every time I bring up the option of self-defense, black men get quiet. You are, I mean, it's amazing. They want, they start talking about economics and other economics, land and, 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 and education, all this other well, we need to separate. Separate for what? So that you can build a nation of niggas? You have the mind of a European. And we know that you won't you won't go to war with Caucasian people, but you will separate and kill the hell out of each other in civil war. The nation wouldn't even wouldn't even be built two days and the Negroes, the niggas will be killing each other. That's guaranteed. I don't want nothing to do with it. Deal with your reality. Deal with the actual enemy and work on yourself and get that devil out of your, out of your system. Get that caveman out of you. When are you going to be like our sister? I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. When are you going to be like Popeye the sailor? I done stood all I can stand. I can't stand no more. That's what I said to myself when I had to deal with my bully. I done stood all I can stand. I cannot stand no more. And when I dealt with that guy, I became insane. But at the same time, he was not as tough as I thought he was. And all that bullying, that oppression that he was giving me for years, that was over. So to my black soul, my young soul brothers and sisters, you really need to stop listening to these, to your elders. They are insane. They are cowards. They pathetic. And if you really want to have a better future for yourself, and you really want to look good in the eyes of those who come behind you. Then let us get together and organize. And put on an option as an option. That we have the right to self-defense. 1000% rebellion. You want to give us hell pigs you crackers. Then we're going to give you some right back. That's the bottom line. That's the solution. You can't have a solution till you get a, get a sucker off your back. Get this beast off your back once and, once and for all. With that said, thank you for listening. It was an honor. We really need to be get serious or shut the hell up. Until next time, I am Angel Snub Number Seven, and as Don Cornelius always always used to close. Until next time, love, peace.